and someone give you a fiver, that would set you up for so much. Who is this someone? It depends who's giving me the fiver. I don't, I'm not talking about you getting groomed. I mean, well, you said it... someone's giving you a fiver. I used to walk home from school and go to the chip shop on a Friday. If a random stranger went, here's a fiver, I'd be like, perfect, I can get it's the chips. It's learning, now. and after 13 years in government, you think that the Conservative Party would have learnt how to run the country. Callum, have they learnt yet? Hi, Callum Scott here, Bedlam reporter, uh, who was uh, Forest Stage live from the Conservative Party conference here in Manchester, where I currently am right now. Brilliant. No. No, they haven't. They, they haven't learnt. Hello and welcome here to the Bedlam Podcast. I don't have anything massive like I did last time, but honestly, just know we are here to little warriors with some interesting facts coming from the bad manifestos from the people around the country that want to take over the world. Um, unfortunately, we're not talking about Vladimir Putin. We're talking about Mr. Caleb Scott. Hello. Pleasure to be joining your good self once again on this, our very own show. Our very own show. Well, I think we need to get straight into this because someone is busy Um working somebody yeah. should be busy getting this trimmed but you'll see as the election campaign trundles on it's only going to get worse to be fair the first thing that i said to him when he first came on is by gosh you need to get yourself trimmed good sir i do indeed i agree i agree i think i need to go for a haircut and have a little bit of a uh, trim as well shape a shape up it's getting a little bit out of hand, but not as much as Gallum's. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, that's that's Beard Watch 2024. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying um, the festivities of election time. Um, there's always something going on, and it seems that the Labour Party have finally got their uh, house in order. They're actually. That, well, I say that the day after there's been some furore over the Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting, but um, it seems that they're getting their house in order. Hmm. I mean, we'll get to it shortly, um, but it does look like, you know, the Labour Party have a strong manifesto to get them into power. Not that they needed much anyway. Um but it does almost seem that the Conservatives are just going down and like trying to just like throw money at everything. Where in the key pledges of the manifesto for the Labour, I've not seen anything about spending money here and spending money there. It's just about publicising things and doesn't say how much money they're spending, um, may I add. But then you've got the other ones that are just basically saying, we want to go back to EU because it's not worked. But anyway, as you can see from the ticker at the bottom, a general election is taking place on the 4th of July, and we're here to talk about the Conservatives, the Labour, Reform UK, Lib Dems, Greens, and Plaid Cymru. Um, obviously, not, not as much as the Labour, Green, uh, Labour? Uh, Liberal Democrats, Greens, and Plaid Cymru, um, because they don't seem to be in the running. Um, but, um, yeah, so should we start off with the third best um, at the moment, Callum? The Conservative Party? The th well, yeah, that's been a massive story um, of the last week or so, that reform have finally overtaken um, the Conservatives in the YouGov poll, the polls. Um, and if you're the Conservatives, that's, that's ridiculously bad. That's really damaging, because that means that reform have come from a place where 
their electoral message was a little bit of a joke to now they are a serious contender for being the leader of the opposition eventually. Yeah. Um, which is complete electoral wipeout from where you think that Boris Johnson took the Conservatives five years ago. He won one of the biggest majorities that they've ever had. I think it was him and Margaret Thatcher were up there with the big, the biggest sweeps into power and um, they've lost all of it. Do you think that that has something to do with Nigel Farage taking over or do you reckon that it's just the whole fact of that, it, you know, the downfall of Rishi Sunak is that. Oh, by the way, can I just, I've just realised we forgot to do this before. And you've seen a little bit of background out in here. Um, phones, please. Shit. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, but I can't hear it. I've just moved mine out of the way and I'm like, <laughs> shit. Yeah. Moved mine out of the way anyway, as well. What was I saying? Um, uh, Nigel Farage, do you reckon um, Reform have jumped them in the polls because of Nigel Farage? I think it's a mix of both. That The Conservatives are running an absolutely appalling campaign. It's almost like they didn't know that the election was going to be called when they called it. Like it's yeah. taken them completely off guard. It's and because that every day or every event seems to come with a problem or an issue. Like the D-Day commemorations, that is the easiest win you can have as a politician. Look at Keir Starmer, pictured speaking with Zelensky. You know, he seemed the more natural statesman on that stage. Enjoy your pot noodle. Um, <laughs> I'm just getting down with the kids. And many people know that I do came, eat pot noodles. <laughs> Sunak came home early, and that's been a nightmare. Um, I wonder how his Harrison was. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he didn't enjoy the uh, the Sky News debate because he wouldn't have been able to watch that, would he? That is true. That's um, true. Um, but just going on that. So you know that obviously <clears throat> certain um, uh, journalists ask questions for across the board. Uh, across the board. Yeah. Um, so like they don't just ask questions for like Sky News. They ask questions for Channel Four, Channel Five, BBC. Well, probably not BBC and ITV, but uh, whatever. Why? So is I think it... ITV were running. If it's the interview that I think you're on about, probably so. I've seen it. ITV on Sky were running. Um, that interview for across the board so that um, during election, they don't do it any other time, but during election campaigns, it's quite hard to get everybody that you want for your station individually. So they'll do ones where they share them out to everyone. But what I don't understand is, right, if you've already answered the questions before, why not answer them again? Because it always seems that that's what Richard Sunak's doing. And the reason why Keir Starmer said that he didn't want to do all these sort of debates on 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 TV is because he's already heard what he wants to talk about. He already knows what he's going to do because he keeps talking about it. And just stop saying the same thing over and over again. Reword it differently because, you know, we are humans. We're not robots. So stop acting like a robot and actually do something. So but, don't turn around and go, I'm not answering these questions. I've already answered them before. It's absolutely ridiculous. You must for an interview. And, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, they, they made Let's themselves look bad at that point. Enjoy. They made themselves look bad at a point where you can't do that. Whereas you look at the, the leaders debate on Sky News the other day, which... I think it was a really good format done not very well. Um, Keir Starmer pulled out the My Father Was a Toolmaker line and everybody laughed, but he pulled it round because you could see that that actually hurt him a little bit. He, he was quite personally offended by people laughing at that. Yeah. And like he massively pulled that round because he could have shown himself to be the, the robotic figure, but he, he, he pulled it around by saying, um, you know, it's not a laughing matter. We could barely make ends meet and, you know, essentially making a full audience of people look, feel bad. 
but yeah. that that shows the there's a depth of feeling there that you didn't or i i certainly didn't get listening to rishi sunak who i thought was better with the questions from the journalist than he was speaking to people but the problem with that is that the people are there to ask the questions that's all they will remember i think also it's like you've got one person that such as like the conservatives where he where rishi sunak has sort of been brought into the country as um no, I, I don't know his background They're like an asylum Careful seeker terrible now, mm -hmm. now. Um, <laughs> am i right <laughs> Um, his fa no, he was born here, but his family, um, I can't remember if it's his, grand yeah, his grandparents or his parents, I'm not sure. So it's like you've got one, you've got a Rishi Sunak who couldn't afford Sky TV so they could pay to take him to um, boarding school. And one of got... the poshest and best boarding schools in the country, I might add. And then you've got Keir Starmer who couldn't make ends meet and ended up being um, the Crown Prosecution Service like leader. He was the director of public prosecutions. Yeah, there you are. See, I say it as the public, General Joe Blog will say it, and Callum will come in and will turn around and go, yeah, is uh, is is uh, Keir Starmer, A, B, C, D. He's got those letters after his name, hasn't he? Kate. KC, 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 Keir Starmer, KC, MBE, D O V. Right, so let's have a quick run through then. So, Conservative key pledges. So, these are from the Conservative Party Manifesto 2024. Um, First one, I don't know nothing about, but it's about all oh, people. What can you know? So the triple lock plus for pensioners are uh, going to raise tax-free pension allowance every year. Yes. So this was uh, this is a big thing and has been all year. Um, I think it was the Daily, no, the Daily Mail, maybe or the Daily Express ran a full campaign, effectively begging the government to keep the triple lock on pensions, basically saying that the government will not tax your pension any more than they do, and actually asking them to make to, to raise that allowance so that you get more of your pension for yourself, less goes to the tax man. And the Conservatives have come out and said, yes, we will do that because they have the financial space to do it. They're already doing it. And it plays incredibly well with their sort of key voter demographic of old but gold. Yeah. Middle England. I do agree with it because I don't think you should be taxed twice on money that you have rightfully earned. Like, yeah. I never thought that you could get taxed on taking your pension out. Like, that this is your money. Problem. You've been taxed already. So this is the problem, right? You've got tax at both ends. So when you get your pay slip, the amount of money is taxed and then your pension is taken out of it. And then at the other end, when eventually you draw out your pension, you're taxed again. So you, you're losing out on two different amounts of money at either end. So, you know, if I was an old person and knew how much was in my pension, um I, i'd probably be quite annoyed about that i kind of i kind of do know what's in my pension because i've been changing pensions about and moving money about and to fight like that and i think i might have 10 grand nice i think i've got about a grand yeah to say that i've been working since i was 18 and i'm 30 this year i have 10 grand in my private pension that's not my national insurance pension my state pension yeah which is sorry sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry i was watching the, <laughs> all this conservative the... chatter it's a bit boring isn't it i was watching the soccer ball wasn't i 
soccer ball. Um, I was watching the soccer ball as well, but I was watching it in the niceness of my own home, not a I pub. In, I was watching it in the niceness of Huddersfield's greatest drinking establishment, the Plumber's Arms. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much is in mind, but you think about that, right? Think about what you just said there. So you have this money that you've worked for and then you have your state pension. But the state pension, what they don't say in the triple lock is that the state pension can be taxed more. So actually, you are losing out on money. I'm about to start ripping people's heads off. <laughs> right. Anyway, next one. <clears throat> so, Callum, what have you done recently that's a big, massive life change to you? I've recently moved home. Fantastic. That takes us on to the next one. So they're going to put 1.6 million well-designed homes in the right places. No, I haven't apostrophized that. That's how they've done it. Oh, Christ. Take it in. Ooh, Take it in. Oh. In the right places. What does that mean? Um, Does that mean that you're going to build 1.6 million, million houses in places where you haven't let the crime get out of control by underfunding the police? Is that one, is that what that means? 1.6 million well-designed homes in the right places, which is probably... 1.6 million well-designed homes essentially means 1.6 million homes that have a roof. That swamp land and out road of you know where they said over here they can't build houses. That seems like five years later, best place to build an house. It's not safe, but well, it wasn't then, but it is now. It it was it was it was. Um, uh, let me click this one to briefly go over it because we did talk about it a lot. Um, the other week, um, national service for eighteen year olds. Not some people happen. say it's a good. Some people say it's a good idea. Some people say it's a bad idea. Yeah, okay, kind of think it's a good idea, but if you're going to make 18-year-olds do it, then you need to make everyone do it. You need to have, when you're announcing big policy like this, and I'm doing the hands because it's irritating, right? You need to make sure that everybody in your party knows the line and toes the line. You cannot have your Prime Minister going on television and saying, we're going to make 18-year-olds do national service, but if they don't, then that is fine. You have the choice. And then have whoever it was, I think it was Miriam Cates, I don't believe she's a Cabinet Minister anymore, but I'm not sure, going to a campaign launch in her constituency and going, yes, there will be consequences for those that don't do it. We are in a snap election. People do not have time to go through this shit and learn it. Learn the lines. I'm just trying to work out how the next one works. So do not point not two divided by three. So over the next few years the so year it's going to be like sixth of a pence that they're going to cut national insurance by every year yeah that'll really impact your pocket how does that <laughs> i don't understand how they can turn around and go yeah um you're gonna get 2p national insurance back in your pocket is that is that 2p Every year, or is that 2p like big? The big 2p is going to be back in your pocket by 2027. I the chancellor has not been very clear on this because in his previous budget, the, the budget that he came out with, I can't remember which one it was, it must have been the spring budget. Um it came out and said that this policy, this very policy right here, was not feasible. Right? This is not feasible. 
until we have an election and now suddenly we found the money oh look at that no one checked down the back of rishi's sofa that was silly wasn't it look there's the money there we can do it now this is so, a flagship policy a big conservative policy with a big capital c right they needed to put this in i think my speaker's cut out Hello. wonderful oh, wonderful so about this one i think we spoke about this the last time that we were on and we basically mm -hmm. turned around and said we are not bothered about paying tax as long as it is used in the right areas we did we agreed that um so start telling us where our money's going yeah, but they don't do that. And and in fairness, Labour won't do that either. Because all I see at the moment out of these pledges for the manifesto is that they're cutting tax on pensioners. They're cutting the national insurance by 2p. Um, they're not raising income tax, insur uh, national insurance, VAT or corporation tax. There's going to be no further council tax bans, no cuts on council tax discounts. Um, no new taxes on pensions, um, but all this money that they're spending on their manifesto has gonna come from somewhere, and right now I don't know where it's coming from, because we've not turned around and said this is where the money's coming from. We're not gonna say, oh, we're gonna tax the the the, the richer people, because why would they say that? So when George Osborne was Chancellor, there was a lot of talk about him and David Cameron introducing uh, stealth tax. Yeah. Which is essentially tax that you don't know that you're paying, which is where yeah. quite a lot of the money can come from. So it can be in things like the th um, your road tax, for example, that might go up. Your yeah. the stamp duty on your house that might go up. The stamp the little duty. incremental fees that they put on eventually, because people see them in their everyday lives, people see those expenses, those taxes as very separate things, right? In the government pot, your taxes, all of them, are one amount of money. Yeah. And they will be distributed wherever. Next, more spending. Investing £36 billion in local roads, rail, buses, and £8.3 billion on potholes slash road services. Now, we think we know where this is coming from. Because when he spoke and in the opening of this, of when I was flicking through my book and saying... Uh, he's just said all oh, this shit, and when are you going to learn? Um, HS2. So because they cancelled the northern leg of HS2, um, this is going to be the whole northern powerhouse, but now it just seems like it's going to be the whole country. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. However, there are two problems with this. One is with the funding, the other is with the policy generally. So... The first problem is you're going to get the money by cancelling HS2, which you have already spent a quite frightening amount of money on. Yeah, but you have already that spent that price, more yeah. than what this policy is worth. They could sell the land of what they already purchased back to the council. That, that land don't have no money. Exactly. Oh, Callum, I've got it. Well-designed homes in the right places. Got you. The right places are not near a train line. Um, That's why it's apostrophized. I like that they've capitalised the D in designed as well. Mate, that was me. Oh. Okay. Um... I was going to say, yeah, the other problem with the, the yeah. 
Look at it now. Ah. Didn't notice it, knob. Uh, the, yeah, um, the other problem with this policy is like the 8.3 billion on potholes slash road services, right? You are pledging this as though you haven't been in power for 14 years and you didn't know that these problems already existed. Now, either you have you are making up this amount of money, right, that you, you've just found because the reason why you haven't fixed them in 14 years is because there is no money, or the reason that you haven't fixed them in 14 years is because you are actually willfully neg negligent at your job. I'm just a bit confused, right, over the whole fact of the like, oh, yeah, we're going to do it on potholes and road services. Right, yeah, so that not what we're paying as road tax for then. <laughs> as, and, and that draws perfectly back to my previous point, that your road tax is not for the road, it's for whatever they want. So your road tax that you're paying on your car, I'm doing the hand because this is getting seriously fucking heated now. The road tax that you're paying on your car that sits on your drive, right, is probably going on spending bullshit flights to Rwanda. Right then. Right. Um, next up, um, I don't know if you're going to know anything about this one, but here we go. Uh, abolish the main rate of self-employed national insurance. Yeah, this is... Uh, um, yeah, this is... Uh, a silly policy. Okay, next. Labour. Oh, no, wait. No, we can't do that. No, we need to go into the second biggest. Yeah. No. Reform UK. Oh. <laughs> All right, so it's Bring on the election. Did they make this or did you make this? Uh, they made this. So this looks like something I that going... I did to present my work in year four. So I was going through um, the. Uh, I was trying to find a place where all the manifestos were in the same place, um, and couldn't do that. Um, is up there all right, or are we better that over works. here? Got our side. Oh yeah, definitely the side. Uh, right. This looks like a reaction video on YouTube. Yeah, that works. That's good. There we are, that's better. Right, so they made this. It is from January 2040, uh, 2024. 2014. Um, so uh, Nigel, Farage, Nigel Farage hasn't said anything on this, but it is a little bit outdated, but it still works. So Stop the Boats uh, said that they failed. Rich's Stop exam bad. report for 2023. Grow the economy. Boom. Reduce debt. Boom. Cut waiting lists. Boom. A halving inflation. All right. Yeah, but I, I to be fair, I'll... right, I already have a problem with this. Half a mark. He hasn't halved inflation. Economic events and situations abroad have brought inflation down. It's nothing that the government have yeah. actually done. Exactly. Half right. a mark. Half a mark. What's next? We're reading this as we go because... I've not actually seen it. Oh, we're jumping ahead of it. I've not actually uh, read this properly. So if there's something wrong on here, don't come for me. This has come from the Reform UK website. Um, right. So Tories and Labour's two sides of the same social coin. Right. I broke Britain. I bankrupt Britain. All right, Callum. Yeah, bye. All right. Yeah. Yeah, bedtime. Just, I'm actually terrified by what I'm I'm looking at. That's yeah, so... my, that's my sleep paralysis demon. So go on, right? So tell us, you've been watching the whole um, debates and stuff like that. How does um... <laughs> I like that? <laughs> Sorry, go on. How how does uh, Nigel Farage come across and the whole reform UK um, at the moment? So, Nigel Farage comes across really, really well, all the time. He is the most experienced TV debater. He's the most experienced in terms of in interviews on TV. He comes across really well. However, their policies really don't translate to every demographic. You know, you're going to get a lot of the key Conservative voters voting for them. 
because they are saying all the right things. The problem is they are saying these things and they are not saying how they're going to pay for them. Right. So, so right. they're going to try and find the money when they get there. So it looks like what they're going to do, they've called it, like it says there, ambitious reform. So tax relief of 20% on all independent healthcare and insurance. If you can pay more, let's encourage you to do so with tax incentive. That isn't a choice that you make. I don't choose how much tax I pay. That is a choice that the government will take, but by selling it to you as something that you decide to do by giving you tax incentives, whether that's 10% off your council tax or something like that, you are still going to be paying more money in the long run. Yeah. I just think it's like you, on one hand, you've got conservatives who are sort of saying this, 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 and then reform just like, I don't know, we're just better than conservatives, aren't we? So, right, the issue with the manifesto for reform is that it's completely contradictory. You've got Nigel Farage going on television and saying, we need to stop the boats. We need to stop immigration. We need to cap immigration now. And then you're saying, with regard to the NHS, we're going to recruit X amount more people. Where do you think those people are going to come from? Hmm. There isn't enough people in this country right now that were born and bred here that would want to do that job. Plus, it would take years to train everybody up. Whereas if you've got somebody that is migrating from a different country that wants to come here, that already has the qualifications in order to do the job, why would you stop that from happening? I mean, I think that there, right, is sort of what you're looking at so ever since like they're trying to cut not not just cutting like immigration like full stop but making sure that it's done in the right way and trying to get rid i don't think right stopping the boats is not exactly the same as stopping immigration stopping the boats is stopping the crime that surrounds risking people's lives for a better life yes okay i'm all for moving to a better country where people are going to look after you although we're not really being looked after with the amount of taxes and stuff like that that were getting thrown on us and shit like that mm. you know nhs waiting times are at a record high you know the need to come down and the way to do that is by getting skilled people into the country to help bring those waiting lists down. And so here's where that... are all your doctors coming from? Where, like the, the One of the countries of where all doctors and nurses come from is um, like, like the Middle East sort of countries, isn't it? Yeah. And like, so look at, why so, not open it up? Look at what Farage said. Um, I think it was on the ITV debate the other day. He was saying that students can come and study here, but they shouldn't bring their mum. <laughs> now, what if, and I put it to you like this, if, if their family wants to come and live here, what if their mother is a qualified nurse or a doctor? What? Why are we, why would you not want that? Because I understand that their argument is that, that, some immigration doesn't contribute to society. In fact, it makes it worse. And we had the example of the Albanian gangs and things like that. But what they don't realise or what they think that the voters don't realise is that that actually constitutes a tiny, tiny percentage of all the Albanian immigration, for one, and all the general immigration as a whole. Most people that come here want to work, want to pay their taxes and do i feel like i'm, I'm in the really debate myself hope, i really hope that came across on the recording what what because you just died <laughs> and i was just sat there looking like puzzled like 
Um, what's going on here? And then I died. And then you just fast forwarded back into the room. I really hope that um, it didn't cut off at a really inappropriate point, like me going, the Albanians. And then it stopped. <laughs> I think it I think it did. <laughs> wow. But no, I just I, I think it's one of those things of like saying, I think like say if you are a student and you are coming to the country, the reason why they're saying don't bring your mum is because of like if your mum is a qualified doctor, nurse, whatever that we need, school teacher or something, then they can come on their own visa. So instead of like bringing all your family, but then that doesn't also doesn't that also sort of count into one of the people uh, one of the parties have turned around saying that they're going to stop people sending money back home yeah so the reason why they're going to stop people sending money back home is because they can't tax it as much as they would like to. but why don't you just do that the UK tax. that's been earned in the uk why don't you um Come literally make up your own like wire transfer to those third party countries and say, This is how you must transfer your money back home and put a tax on that, sending that back. Yeah, well, because yeah, if because people who are have... in government, this is why we're not in government. No, but I mean, this is why we should be in government. Our, policy, so come... our policies make sense. I think what we should do is, right, we should sit down when we get a little bit more time together. We should make our own, like, party manifestos. Yes. And see what Absolutely. happens. Should we just launch the Bedlam party, see what happens? I mean, we can do. Count Binface. See, we could beat him. Right, come we on could, then. We could Let's bin go. him. <laughs> Let's get onto your area now. The area of expertise for Callum Scott. I'm um, entirely labor. impartial. I don't know what you mean. So one thing that I am massive for is the Great British Energy. I'm all for yeah. it. Because ever since COVID, ever since the war in Ukraine um, and stuff like that, you know, all these energy companies are taking so many millions from people just like me and you and it's just like i seen the other day someone that i um watch on youtube on a daily basis and um, his energy bill is seven thousand pound a month what the bloody hell is he doing running a weed farm yeah, that's what he said. He said that the police are going to come back because one month it was like seven grand. Uh, one month it was one grand, uh, just over a grand. And then the other one, uh, the most recent one, seven grand. And he basically just said that they're going to, the police are going to be coming back thinking I'm, I've got a weed farm here. Yeah. Um, but th that's the thing. So it's like the Great British Energy is so making it publicly owned, um, publicly owned, clean uh, power company. Um, on top of that, they're uh, doing capping corporation tax at 25%. Um, they uh, put in minimum wage uh, to account for cost of living um, with no age limit, uh, no income tax, VAT, uh, no income tax, national insurance or VAT rises, and then 10-year infrastructure strategy for railroad and homes. I was so trying to find... That I have with that. The only issue that I have with the, the last point there of the 10-year plan for infrastructure is that we've not seen it yet. Yeah. You know, you're saying that you've got the plan. I would like to know what the plan is. And maybe that's coming a little bit closer because you find that people keep these sorts of policies in their back pocket. They will go to somewhere where they know that the roads are bad and they will announce yeah. something like this. Yeah. But maybe we'll see that, um, maybe we won't, but I would like to see a little bit more on things like that. Yeah, just having a quick look through. So um 
on the environment sort of background, sticking on with the Great British Energy, um, basically saying uh, block executive bonuses for failing water companies, um, making 5 million homes energy efficient. 5 million, is that it? But to be fair, a lot of them already are. Yeah. And a lot of them you can't make more energy efficient, like, like where I live is quite good but there's nothing i can do to make it better yeah so um you know it's 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 five million but that will i wouldn't be surprised if that five million is a figure that they look to hit first and then go for another five million or another 10 million once they've figured out how much that is actually going to cost yeah um yeah so they're wanting to create 650,000 new energy jobs by 2030 um, and they want long-term security for nuclear power and to ban fracking as well. So what is good about that when you think about it logically is that most of the UK's offshore wind and energy is generated in Scotland and the SNP have been arguing that that is Scotland's energy but yeah this this election couldn't have been better time for them because the SNP currently are in a mess. Um, they're not looking good. It's looking like for the first time in uh, since Blair that Labour will win Scotland. What that means is that Anna Sawa and Keir Starmer can work together when they're doing things like this to make sure that that company, those jobs, can be given to the people in Scotland, in the UK, what like coastal towns or whatever, they can put those apprenticeships, those jobs, whatever, in the in the most needed places. And Labour have been announcing a lot of policy like this. So like the the policy on the Trident deterrent nuclear submarines, they've announced that they're going to run some new infrastructure in Barrow and Finest which is a really like tight-knit coastal area that has been quite deprived for a long time. So they're giving jobs in their manifesto, in their infrastructure that they're planning to put in, they're putting jobs in the places that they need them, which is, I think, a really good way of doing it because it means that when it comes to other policies like road, rail, it gives you a little bit more time because you're not asking people to go out and use the public transport infrastructure to get to the new things that you're building when you build them on their doorstep. Absolutely. And one of the things that we've seen is how are Labour going to get some of their money back? And that is by VAT on private school fees. Now, we have seen over the last couple of weeks since this was announced that uh, parents were looking at pulling children out of private schools so they don't have to pay those fees. Yeah, um, and essentially the Labour argument for this is they do that to bring... So currently you've got private schools here and, and private schools in terms of quality are only getting better. Things can only get better. Um, and state schools are going down and the, 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 the gulf between is becoming bigger and bigger. So what they're going to do is VAT on private schools brings the private schools down brings the state schools up, but it's still not going to be a level playing field. So you are still getting what you're paying for. Yeah. But it just what means is... that the, the quality of state schools can get better, which the massive majority of children in this country use. Yeah. And you're going to get then better children down the line that are going to have bigger brains, unlike me. Um, and you're going to be able to get them into these skilled they're jobs. Thinking in, they're thinking in eight dimensions. They're playing so, 3D chess. With um, like staying on the schools, like education sort of piece of it. Um, so instead of um, a national service for 18 year olds, Labour are going down the route of uh, training apprenticeships and help to find work for all 18 to 21 year olds which is 
obviously um, better than what we've got at the moment, or if not, you know, along the same lines, because it has changed a little bit over the last recent few years, since, like since when I was in school um, all those years ago, um, where you couldn't just leave um, year 11 and just go straight into a job. Um, you had to go into further education, um, but you could do that through apprenticeships and stuff like that. So it is sort yeah. of similar, but different. Yeah, it's making me cry. Um, so um, the the, go on. the apprenticeships thing is a good a good thing because what you'll find with quite a lot of these policies is, is that they tie in with each other. Yeah, and that makes it easier for the government to deliver on their promises because you can say we're going to put a thousand apprenticeships into the new Trident scheme. We're going to put two thousand apprenticeships into Great British Energy. You're helping yourself with your own policy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so they're going with a hundred thousand new nursery places, um, free primary school breakfast clubs, because obviously, um, they're going down the route of training more UK workers and banning employers from recruiting from overseas as default. So that would mean that more people that are, uh, um, United Kingdom citizen um, will get jobs and obviously not knowing what sort of time frame that they work on, those free school breakfasts will need to be there. Um, 3,000 primary school-based nurseries, um, which I don't know what the difference is between a normal nursery and a primary school nursery, but there you are. Um, so a primary school nursery also- is a nursery that I went to, which is... Yeah, in the school well. we're going to be going to, whereas a, a yeah. nursery on its own is like you go there before. Nursery Thanks chat Callum. with Callum. Thanks, Callum's got there. Back to the studio. Um, and then six and a half thousand new teachers, um, which we've sh- been on and strongly debated before. Um, yeah. Um, quite a lot of that on... statement I will strongly, you know, I, you know my personal allegiances, but quite a lot of that statement I will debate because actually that's a lot of things there that cost a lot of money. Yeah. And nowhere in the taxes that you will not raise have you said where the money, is, that sort of money is going to come from. You look like you've oh, yeah. seen something that you absolutely disagree. No, I've just broken the website. I'm trying to scroll back to the start, but my thing was still clicked on the bar at the bottom, so every time I've moved over to this screen to click on the next one, it kept flying all over the place. Right. Anyway, staying on with kids, um, votes for 16-year-olds. Yes, I'm conflicted about this. Uh... I think it's always been strong um, because they tried to do this when we were in primary school. Uh, Not primary school, high school. Um, And when we did it, I think it was when the Conservatives were coming into power. So, yeah, it would have been 14 years ago. Um, So it would have been the the leaving of Labour and the introduction of um, a nice brand new Conservatives under David Cameron. Goodbye, um, Gordon which... Brown. Here is a shiny David Cameron that he had to get his way in with the Lib Dems. Which went very well. Um, Here's David Cameron and, and Nick Clegg. I remember that... Um, so basically, because the whole thing was they were trying to do trying to do it where they get 16-year-olds to vote um, because that's a big, a big, big cut of the population of getting young people in. And the reason why you want 16-year-olds to vote is because in five years' time, that 16-year-old is not going to be 16 no more and is going to be in your bracket of 18 to 21-year-olds of getting a job. And in high school, the, the school went, you know what, 
let's do something. So here are the manifestos of the top three. So Labour, Conservatives, Lib Dems. And let's see who you as a school would put into chat into power. We all voted Lib Dems. And then Ooh. Lib Dems went in with Conservatives. Yeah. Which basically shows that if you let the kids vote, you would have had a landslide there. And I think back then as well, because Nick Clegg was very down with the kids then as well, wasn't he? Well, look at Ed Derby now. This election campaign for Ed Derby has been hilarious. It's been excellent. I've yeah. loved every minute. He's brilliant. Ed Derby he's, is fantastic. But I also like how he, like I've seen an interview with him where he's talking about being the full-time carer of his son. And like he gets quite emotional. He really cares about subjects. Yeah. And he's about as far away from a robotic politician as you can get. You know, he, he, the man cried on television. That That's election gold. He's one of us, though, in it, really. Exactly. He's not a, a careerist sort of politician. There's an excellent video. <laughs> There's an excellent video of him drunk outside a pub. Somebody turns around and just goes, so was, oh, how do you think the Conservatives are going to do in the polls? He just goes, oh, I think they're going to get assholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, right, I think, I think they, they do connect well. And I think the problem with giving the 16-year-olds the vote, right? there is only one problem with it. I think it is a good idea. But... At 16, you are more likely to encounter radical political ideas and go, yeah, that sounds great. Oh, my God, yes, free hand jobs for the blind. Let's get behind that. Yeah. And you won't absorb policy. So you might get a disproportionate amount of people voting for really radical things. A bit, a bit like almost, Corbyn and Labour, a little bit, I think. Yeah. That energised the youth vote a lot. I, I almost want to go down the route of basically saying, like, if you get 16-year-olds into vote, you need to literally let them know that whatever the key pledges are, it's not there. They are prone to lying to you. and. Yeah you're literally going to get led down a line of this, 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 this. You need to be very, not very knowledgeable, but you need to have a little bit of knowledge about you to know that, you know, if something looks too good to be true, like, hey, free Wi-Fi, um, you know. Hey, not let's get rid of tuition fees. Hey, let's have McDonald's on every street corner. Oh, wait, there is. Oh, that's already happened. That's part of the 18 billion new homes. But yeah, you are going to be led down a yellow brick road. And yeah. literally, someone is going to be holding your hand going, hey, come down here, let's see what we've got. And it's just going to be a load of shit policies um, that no one's ever going to action over five years. <coughs> 14 years, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> oh, bit pot the cough's getting cold. bad. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on away from that. So, um, Labour want to devolve transport, skills, housing, and planning powers to local mayors. Um, on top of this, I have just been having a look and housing. Um, they want to uh, make it easier to get permission to build. So, I'm guessing yes. that's where this will come in as well. Yes. And I think that this is one of the best policies in the manifesto. Because mm. look at the examples of devolved administrations that we've currently got. And look how well they're doing. Manchester now has public transport back under public control. Which yeah. means that all of the buses run on time. All of the buses are one price no matter where you're going and the fares cannot be put up without consultation the houses are being built to schedule and everything is done with the area's best interests at heart 
like Andy Street in Birmingham, I know he's recently lost lost his seat as the mayor of Birmingham, um, Conservative mayor, but was very good for Birmingham. You know, we've got the Commonwealth Games, got the City of Culture. The, there's a lot of things good with devolved administrations and they do work. Do you say Birmingham? Yeah. Isn't that and 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 the Birmingham City Council that are now bankrupt? So the Birmingham City Council is different from the mayor. Yeah, but isn't that still the pot that he puts his hand in and says, "Hey, this seems like a good idea." Actually, in more devolved administrations, it's the pot that he contributes into rather than taking money out of. Oh, so he's not putting no money in. Right, got it. Yeah, well, pretty much. Or, no, to be fair, the council have spent more than what he's put in. Yeah. On ridiculous um, things like thicker truncheons for policemen and shit like that. So, under the housing bit, I was wanting to find, like, a transport bit because I think that Labour are more about the transport sort of side of stuff as well as... Um, yeah. but couldn't find anything on it. Um, so um, they want to make it easy to get permission to build. Um, so whether that's houses, um, buildings and stuff like that, whatever. Um, they want to end no-fault evictions immediately. Um, they want to stop developers selling new flats as leaseholds. Um, so that's one thing that you probably knowledgeable knowledgeable about, and I've seen a couple of times. So mm. leaseholds are different to freeholds. So if you're looking at getting out on the housing market, leaseholds is where you've got to pay a certain amount of money each year towards the building maintenance yes. side. Yes, um, that money does not have a cap. Yep. That can be a ridiculous amount of money because you're at the behest of whoever you're paying the money to to for the amount they work it out they just tell you and you have to pay it um and then they want to build uh, 1.5 new homes so that's different one and a half to... new homes <laughs> they want to build 1.5 new homes 1.5 million new homes <laughs> we've built one and a half new homes this one doesn't have a roof is that what i said did i say one yeah. and a half new homes oh my god i'm so sorry They've taken blood from me today, and I just can't think. Um, so that's under the 1.6 million well-designed homes in the right places. But also, the 1.6 million well-designed homes in the right places was on the key pledges. Was it? Yeah, key pledges for the Conservatives. It's not on the key pledges for Labour let that sink in see now that can be viewed as two things that can either be viewed as a bad thing because they're not committing to it or it can be viewed as a good thing because they're unaware of whether they can afford it so they're not going to put it as one of the key pledges whereas the Conservatives are unaware as to whether they can afford it but they've put it as a key pledge which is a dangerous game mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing on the housing for Labour is that they plan to build new towns. Quite generic, but I can see how that might work, what with the infrastructure that they're planning again. GB Energy, Trident, new missiles and things like that. You know, they're, they're putting everything in place to be able to do that. And if they want to put some new towns in certain areas where they feel like they would benefit from the jobs that they're creating, and that's probably quite a good idea. And the next thing on the list is nationalised railways. So going down the route, again, Finally. Of transport and stuff like that. Literally, let's get it under wraps. Let's do Somebody it. Somebody needs to sort this out. Let's just get someone that can run something to get people from A to B. It's not hard. Yeah. No. It's... Think of noisy things, run along tracks at certain times of day. Done. That's true. I don't understand how hard it can be. So the problem is that you want to nationalise the railways, that's fine, right? But then you are entirely responsible for the 
every element. Which is fine, it's happened before and it's worked before. And when things go wrong, things like the railways get taken back under public control because it works. The problem is we don't know how much money is in the pot. So yeah. we don't know how much they're going to be able to invest in the railways if they take them back under public control, which they want to do, which means we don't know how much better the railways are going to be under public control. It was good in the 80s because before Margaret Thatcher sold them all off, there was quite a lot of money in that industry. There is less money now, and that number is still decreasing. Well, just going into the nationalisation of the railways, under the economy bracket for Labour, it does have a 10-year infrastructure strategy for rail, road and homes. So if there's nothing under that, then we won't know, will we? Yeah, we won't find out probably until Ever. One of the MPs is asked on question time and has to and accidentally doesn't tell the lie, tells the truth. Yeah. Um, and then the last one, um, which we will probably gloss over the bigger picture of it. Um, new border security command to prosecute small boat gangs. This is very much a Keir Starmer policy, you can tell. It's a director of yeah. public prosecutions, former lawyer sort of policy. Knows where the problem is, wants to go out and stop the problem at the source rather than waiting for the problem to arise here. Well, it's what we've always needed to do. To stop the small boats, you need to stop the gangs that operate them. So, Labour want to go down the route of cancelling the Rwanda policy that has never got started. Um, they want to increase security cooperation with the EU. They want to give police more powers to search suspected people smugglers. Um, but they do want to also train more UK workers and ban employers recruiting from overseas as default. But they also want to hire a thousand more case workers to return more asylum seekers, but they also want to abolish the non-DOM status, which has ever been so highly spoke about. Um, just to gloss over, uh, Conservatives' party uh, manifesto for immigration is that they do want to remove student discount on visa health surcharges, increase visa fees, legal cap on migration, they want to have migration, then reduce it every year. And then the big talking policy of the, the last six to 12 months is the Rwanda scheme. They want to get that going. They want to get flights taken off, um, taken off um, regular. Um, but everyone else in the manifestos will want to get rid of it because it's not a good idea so like so, for example Lib uh, liberal democrats want to scrap the rwanda policy uh green party don't even talk about it um and plaid cymru don't even uh, opposes rwanda policy so th they all oppose it the only person that wants it to go ahead is uh rishi sunak so the problem here is compare compare and contrast the two so labor wants to go after the gangs and they're, in their policies are making it harder to come from the nations that we know are problematic for this sort of thing. Whereas the conservative policies there that you've just read out make it harder for everybody coming into this country, whether you're coming from the USA, France, Romania, Rwanda. Yeah. They make it harder for everybody. And that's not a look that you want as a country. You don't want to be turning inward because a lot of the best talent in this country comes from abroad. Yeah. Like, and we, what are we saying that 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 we stop that straight away? Instead of going after the actual problem, you're making the system harder for everybody unnecessarily. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think you want to get 
if you're going to make it harder for everyone coming into the country, then you need to make it easier for um, people of the United Kingdom, citizens. Uh, you need to make it easier for them to earn those skills to be able to become what you want them to be. Exactly. And there's not enough infrastructure in the Conservative manifesto to be able to do that. And there's also not enough um, influence. Like, there's nothing there that is, is going to make me want to become a doctor anytime soon. Exactly. Because then you're constantly seeing that they're always striking. Um, and it annoys me that it's the young doctors that are striking. Um, but also, the young doctors could be striking because they've been literally um, told something and the other, what they've been told hasn't come to fruition. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, no, it's a bit shit at the moment, but hopefully now, it, I mean, to be fair, if the Conservative Party do get elected in for another five years, then at least Rishi can then sit down and he can go, look, you know, we've had a horrendous time of it over the last 14 years. Let's do something. Let's actually do something about it. You know, people have been moaning and groaning over the past couple of years saying, I've not been elected into this role. I've now been elected into this role. So let's prove to the people that have voted for me or have not voted for me that, you know, I'm the right man for the job and that I can do this. Yeah. And I think he needs to, he needs to do that. Um, Keir Starmer, when he comes in, he's going to have a very hard time of it because he doesn't know how much money is left. Um she doesn't know which of his policies that he's going to be able to do, go ahead with and stuff like that. If Labour do get in, are they going to need another party with them to help get them over the line and get them the first past the post? Again, who knows? I mean, I don't think Labour are going to struggle at getting first past the post. I think it's going <laughs> to be Conservatives, Reform um, and Lib Dems. So it's just now out of all those. But again, Who's going to want to work with the Conservatives? Because you're not going to be able to come up. You, you, you're not going to be able to turn around to, like, say, Lib Dems and go, right, um, my main thing is the Rwanda scheme. Everyone's going to oppose the Rwanda scheme. And in those initial chats, it's just going to be constant crap back and forth. Yeah, and... I think as well, the problem that we've got now is that the polling suggests that the Conservatives are going to be the third largest party in the next parliament. Yeah. Which should tell you, as a party, even right now, people do not like your policy. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't think people would have gone as far as reading policy. They probably would have just gone down the media route and just gone, oh, look, this is what um, so media are saying, that conservatives want to make sure the flights go, um, and what was it, national service for 18-year-olds. I don't think I've heard anything else, apart from the pensions bit. So you've got pensions, yeah. um, national service for 18-year-olds, and uh, sending people to Rwanda. That's all I've seen about Conservatives. I can't say I've seen anything about Labour because <laughs> I've not been looking. The only thing that I've seen about Labour is that they're on course, well, we think they're on course for a supermajority, which would be an interesting concept. It's yeah. essentially that Keir Starmer becomes the President of the United Kingdom. So what would that... Um, what, a super majority would mean that Labour have not only the most MPs in Parliament, but that essentially think of Parliament right as it is now: Conservatives, yeah. Labour, SNP, DUP, Greens, all in one corner. Right? A super majority would be Labour, Labour, Conservative, Reform. So, how would they do? Um, Prime Minister's questions? You still do it across the dispatch box. Oh, okay. You need to have, like, their own side heckling you when they're sat next to you. 
It's gonna, that's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be interesting. The next, the next few weeks and months in in UK politics are gonna be very interesting. It's gonna be nuts. Crazy, crazy, crazy. How many weeks is it now? Uh, was it fourth of July? So two weeks on Thursday. <gasps> it's okay. It's nearly over. It's nearly over, everyone. These TV debates that are getting in the way of Emma Dale and EastEnders, that, that it's nearly over. We can all get back to whatever we want to do on an evening. Most people haven't changed what they do on an evening. That's just me. It is nuts. Right. Let's just not forget the others, though, because, I mean, you did say that you liked Plaid Cymru. Um, Green Party, for me, are not doing it because they're just wanting to do this, 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 this. But to be fair, they might be quite good, actually, without thinking about it now. Um, so yeah, Lib know. Dems, key pledges. Uh, so they want to rejoin the single market, um, which kind of might be good for the country um, because mm. um, uh, Brexit didn't really work. Um and then the longer term aim um, is to rejoin the EU. I think that is a big question mark of uh, joining the EU because th they want to th they want so much money from us, and um, because of how big of a nation we are um, in the um, economy and stuff like that, they they want a lot of money from us. And I don't think going back into the EU is the best thing for it. Um, they want nine billion to NHS and care. They want free personal care for elderly and disabled. They want higher salary for care workers. True. Um, cut asylum backlog. Allow asylum seekers to work after three months. Um, raise £5 billion from reforming capital gains and then replace first-past-the-post voting with proportional representation. That's big. Because we've had a referendum on this before in this country under David Cameron yeah. and it lost. Yeah. So to implement that policy without going to the country, I think would be a dangerous decision. Yeah. So um, anything that you would like to add on regarding Lib Dems, apart from Ed David or Sir Ed David is fucking genius. Uh, no, just that. Cool, no problem. So I'm going to quick look through. Can't see anything else I want to talk about. Right, Green Party. So their key pledges are wealth tax. So they want to do 1% on assets above 10 million and then 2% above 1 billion. Um, so that would be a lot of money into the pockets to pay for everything that has happened and happening. Um, Not to pay for their manifesto, though. Which is yeah. very expensive. Um, 8% national insurance on income above £50,270. Um, £50 billion a year on NHS by 2030. Um, £20 billion for the care sector. Nationalise water, railways and five big energy companies. And a four-day working week. Good luck trying to afford all that. It's already nearly a hundred billion in the numbers that we know about. And Plaid Cymru. Um, so they want to put so we were reading this before, and I was like, it's very Welsh, is this isn't it? They want everything for them. They are Welsh nationalists, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they want to put four billion pounds owed to wales from a hs2 uh, into public transport so is that for just wales or for the whole country just wales so they want to put four billion towards wales hell yeah well you're not going to be gonna, wales is going to be going about on hover cars while we go back to steam trains <laughs> um they want to equalize capital gains tax with income tax um, Wales that's to have a better full... spin. Sorry, that's a better spin on the Greens policy. That's a more affordable way of doing that, and I'm not sure why the Greens haven't done that. Fair enough. Uh, Wales to have full control of um, economic decisions. Freedom. 
Uh, and that's Scotland. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, and the nationalised care services, um, and then they want to take full control of the Crown Estate because they couldn't think of anything else to put in there. Yeah, they're just sitting there in a room saying, Ren, we have to hit a thousand words. I can't think of any more policy. Oh, the Town Estate, oh, of course. Clyde Cumbie wants to put a VAT on private school fees as well. Yeah, they are quite closely aligned with some Labour policies in that they are quite socialist. Um, Green Party. Health. End new HIV cases by 2030. Get rid of HIV. How? how We're going to work? abolish STDs. They want to abolish uh, will... Ofsted. Yeah, I know. That's, that's wild. That's a crazy education policy. Um, Look, Ofsted is not without its faults. But to end university tuitions and end high stakes school testing. But, yeah. so you want to get you see what I mean? Are you starting to see what I mean? So you want to get rid of basically skilled workers? You want to get rid of skilled workers and you also want to get rid of the people that make sure that the schools can produce skilled workers. Hang on, this will be funny. Defence. Right, let's just have a quick look at defence. When do you Shake have to hands go? with everyone by 2030. Um, ideally soon. Right, so defence. So Labour, don't mention anything about Gaza. Conservatives, Lies. don't mention anything about Gaza. Labour have said that they will recognise the Palestinian state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Labour, uh, Labour, Liberal Democrats, I need to stop doing that because they're not. Liberal, Liberal Democrats. Democrats. <laughs> my god Democrats. that's what we could call them if they were in coalition government liberal democrats the liberal democrat the democrats democrats they don't mention anything about gaza in liberal democrats either but green party you've got a media belittral ceasefire in gaza they also yeah. want to cancel the trident nuclear weapons program and end arms sales to israel so what the, what we're doing is pissing off one of the hardest armies in the world and then getting rid of our means of defending ourselves against that army. Um, for the Plaid Cymru, defence, peaceful ceasefire in Gaza, a post trident nuclear weapon system, and a pose increase in defence spending. So we're getting rid of defence and then not spending any money on maintaining the smaller numbers that we already have. I bet they wouldn't oppose the Trident Missile if it was called something like the Carnarfon Missile or St. David's Missile. <laughs> I just think defence is one of the biggest things at the moment and we need to well, start doing... We, we, we need to start increasing that defence because we're going from one of the best to one of the shittest very quickly. Very quickly, and a whole raft of 18-year-olds is not going to fix that problem. No, exactly. Which is why nobody oh. else nobody else has it in their manifesto. Anyway, I think to end this, we need to go to the crime bracket under Liberal Democrats who want new laws to crack down on puppet and kitten smuggling. It's not where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> um, anything you can to smuggle say... any animals you want. You can smuggle any animals you want, apart from little puppies and kittens. Didn't we have? Don't we have anything to say? No. Lib Dems also think... want to legalize weed. Do they? Yeah, it's not in the manifesto, but it's definitely something that they would do. I don't think there's anything else to say other than well done England. You're amazing. Well, no, to be fair, you were a bit shit. Football yesterday was brilliant. 
all day. Yeah, the it, Poland game it, was yeah. great. The Denmark game was a little bit dull. But the England I thought England played well in the first half and then Serbia played really well in the second half, but just couldn't find that cutting edge. I just want to say um, it was terrible to hear over the weekend that Sarcic had died. Yeah, I'm, I've not really read much into that, um, but that was Which is crazy. Very, yeah, 26 year old on holiday with his mates. Um, he'd literally played um, against Belgium like a week earlier and got man of the match. Um, Millwall keeper, and yeah, he was just felt poorly and just fell ill, and ambulance came and couldn't revive him basically. Which is uh, really thought, unfortunate. I'm sorry, but... for, I'm sorry for ruining this moment, but I thought you were going to say ambulance came and Punt died. <laughs> so, sorry, Alison, if you're watching. I didn't say that sorry. word. It didn't come out of my mouth. It came out of sorry. Callum's mouth. Sorry, I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry. Everyone. I promise. I, I promise. Cut that I out. Won't... Cut that out. I, I promise Cut that, that your daughter won't be around my best mate. Um, and it, especially when he's saying words like that, that was very cut that wonderful. out. Get that cut um, out, cut it out now. Nah, chop I can't it. Cut out. How do I chop it? Oh, <laughs> chop I'd like it out. I'd like to formally apologize on behalf of myself and my party for my actions. I've let down myself, my colleagues, the electorate, and the voters of the future. I sincerely apologize. And I shall be making no further statement on this matter. I will take any questions now. Hang on. I feel it, it is my duty as an elected representative of the people to say that these things do happen sometimes in the high stakes world that we live in. Um, Sometimes the stress gets the, the better of people like myself. And, and for that, I would like to uh, apologise for using that language. It's not language I ever would use normally. Um, some of my best friends are women. Um, I apologise with my whole heart, wholeheartedly. I will now take questions. If anyone says that I am not taking these allegations incredibly seriously, they are incorrect. <laughs> I refute that claim. Oh, Jesus. Right, anyway, go on. You need to go and get yourself off to work. Yeah! I also just want to say, um, if people are still here and watching our nonsense, um, I'm back to posting on my blog tom's head dot space um and i think callum's doing a lot of stuff as well i'm doing the politics you're doing the menti h carry on menti h yeah 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 menti h and not feeling too great so i had my blood to blood's taken this morning because i got told that my eyes are 80 years old <sighs> Yeah, so I went to the opticians last week and they basically said to me that I have an Arcus ring and it's only seen in uh, people who are like 60 and above. What is it? Uh, I think it, it, it's in my letter, it said something along the lines of that I shouldn't have it at my age. Right. Uh, so I think it's something to do with like cholesterol and stuff like that. So I basically, I think uh, I just need to stop eating and stop drinking and just eat cardboard. Living, you know. This is oh. my lunch. Oh, lovely. I can mm. enjoy that. On that note, I believe anyway. it's time we got the fuck out of here. Thank you very yeah. much.
got the socials down in this corner here so go follow us if you want to go follow us and all the links are in the description below if you're watching on youtube um facebook you know where it all is it's all in the end title if you want to go listen to it instead of watching us you can go to spotify bedlam yt and then also youtube if you've not found us bedlam yt easy peasy thanks very much and uh come on england it's coming up no come on georgia my boys coming up it's coming up